Shalom. I am Rabbi Nathan Davidovich speaking to you on behalf of the webyeshiva.org, speaking to you from Ephrat, Israel. Tonight begins Pesach Sheni. The 14th of the Hebrew month of Eeyore is Pesach Sheni, the second Pesach, the second Passover. This is the time from which we learn that every one of us has a second chance, a second chance to repair that which is broken, whether emotionally, spiritually, physically. How did Pesach Sheni come about? And what is what do we learn from this? First of all, when the Jews were leaving Egypt, the commandment that they had to fulfill was to eat the Paschal Lamb, the Passover offering. But those people that were ritually unpure because they'd come in contact with the dead body were not allowed to eat the Passover offering at that time. And they, you know, were very dejected. You know, here's a greatest mitzvah, the great command that God is giving them symbol of the freedom from Egypt, and they can partake in this meal, in this celebration. And they ask Moshe, Moses, what should we do? And Moshe asks God, and God says as follows, and this is, uh, the, the Torah quotes uh, in Bamidbar, it says, there, there were people, and they, they came and they said, why should we de be deprived of this? God spoke to Moses saying, he said, speak to the Israel. And he says, anybody that was either ritually impure or was a, in a faraway place. And this, of course, applied during the, the time of the uh, Mishkan in the wilderness, the sanctuary, the tabernacle, the time of the, the, the base of Migdash, both Bate Migdash, both holy temples, Jerusalem. The, the command was, to allow anybody who was ritually impure at the uh, initial time of Passover, on the 14th, the night of the 14th of Nisan, or if they were too far from Jerusalem to bring the Paschal offering, they could do it a month later. And that is Pesach Sheni. They're in the times of the uh, Beis Amigdash when you could still make the offering, uh, some of the rituals continued. The ritual of eating matzah uh, and eating uh, eating the, the Paschal offering. Now, of course, today we don't have a base of Migdash, so uh, we simply commemorate it as a day reminding of this, but it's a day that tells us we have a second chance. There are a lot of different interesting commentaries on what Pesach Sheni is. The uh, Lubavitcher Rebbe, uh, said that on the first day of Pesach, on the, the real Pesach, what is our job? Our job is to remove ourselves from evil. To remove ourselves from evil symbolized by the chumetz, by the leaven that we remove from our house. But he says that the Pesach Sheni, this time of Pesach Sheni, gives us the opportunity to be able to change this evil symbolized by chumetz into good. The second part of the sentence is turn from evil and do good. And this, of course, we're in the middle of the Sphira period, the counting from Pesach to Shavuos, the counting of 49 days where we try to each day elevate ourselves spiritually. So this, according to Lubavitcher Rebbe, this is the time that you can take on this holiday those bad things and turn them to good. Rabbi Nachman of Breslov says, Ein yiush olam. There's no such thing as despair in the world. And this Pesach Sheni teaches us that every one of us have a, a, a special chance, a chance to come closer to God, come, a chance to rectify those things that we have kind of slipped up on spiritually. Uh, this is our opportunity. There's an interesting story that illustrates 
uh, illustrates this. And it's a story of Rabbi Yehudi Yosefi, who would give a, uh, a, a class, a weekly class, uh, on, the, on the Torah in a little synagogue, a little Persian synagogue in B'nai Brak. And there was a young man who always attended uh, these shiurim, these classes. He loved to attend them, and he wanted to, his name was Aaron, and he wanted to uh, invite his friend, who was not a Torah-observant Jew, he wanted to invite his friend, uh, uh, his friend Eli, to attend the, the class, he says, don't worry, it's not just going to be a lot of religious gobbledygook, you're going to get a lot of good things from it. So Eli agrees to go, and the rabbi uh, starts talking about um, after Moses was discovered by Paro as having uh, killed the Egyptian, and he was sentenced to death. And then he quoted the Midrash that says, as Pharaoh was about to uh, cut his head off, put the sword on his head, his neck turned to marble and the sword broke. And he said, from this we learn that even when uh, uh, even when you, a, so, a sword is hanging over your head, never give up hope. Well, this uh, Eli fellow uh, heard this and he got up and he started laughing, mocking. He says, well, I didn't come here to hear fairy tales about necks turning to marble. This is ridiculous. And he stomps out. And uh, the, the sheer went on, the class went on. A couple years later, the uh, rabbi's giving a shear. At the end of the shear, he sees somebody. Somebody comes up to him. He says, I don't know if you recognize me. Uh, and he says, remind me. He says, well, two years ago, I was in your class, and you talked about Cherev, uh, if a sword is hanging over the, the neck of a person, don't give up from, from mercy. And I made, pun, I made fun of you, and I apologize for that. Oh, okay, now I remember. So what's happened to you? Where have you been? He says, well, I left. I went to Japan, and I became a, a member. I started working with the Japanese mafia. And my dealings with them were not uh, on the up and up. And they discovered that I had been uh, defrauding them. So under their rules, I was to be put to death. They had a quick trial in the field, found me guilty. And they said, you're going to be executed by a samurai sword. And I'm laying there on the table, ready to be executed. Uh, I'm, I'm sweating profusely, I'm worrying, and all of a sudden, your words came to my mind that even if there's a sword hanging over your neck, you shouldn't give up hope. And I screamed out to God, I says, God, prove that your words are true. Save me from this. And just as the sword was about to come down, there was a woman's voice from the end of the room saying, stop. What are you doing? You can't execute this man. And it turned out the woman was the wife of the leader of this of the mafia. And they said, the husband said, why? What's going on? And she said, this Israeli Jew saved my life and my children's life five years ago when we had an earthquake. He pulled us out of the rubble. And they, they had a... Uh, a rule that if you found something good about somebody, they wouldn't execute him. So they um, did away with the execution. They set him free. And he was wondering, he says, how is this possible? He said, I've only been in Japan two years. But yet, uh, he says, I saved your life. Well, thank God. Anyway, so now that this happened, I immediately went back to, to Israel and started improving myself. And here I am uh, to attest to you that there is no reason to ever give up hope. Even if the, in the darkest moment of your life when a sword is hanging over your neck, there's still hope. And with that, we understand the concept of Pesach Sheni. We have a second chance from God 
to make amends, to improve ourselves spiritually, let's take advantage of it. Thank you for listening. On behalf of the webyeshiva.org, I wish everybody a wonderful Shabbat.